So again, welcome to this workshop. We're gonna begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We are God's beloved children, so let's pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mary, patroness of the Diocese of Fargo. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence, patron of archivists. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 My name is Father Andrew Jasinski. I'm the Chancellor of the Diocese of Fargo. And as canon law defines the chancellor, I'm also the diocesan archivist. I'm not a trained archivist. I don't pretend to know all this stuff, but this is what the bishop asked me to do, so I do a little bit of reading, do a little bit of training, and do the best I can. One of your uh, uh, resources, which, which is very good, are diocesan personnel. So all of you have this. Hopefully, if you have a question, open it up and call us, okay? My number is in here. Tamara's number is in here. The other person who you might want to call on some questions is Tim Olson. He's a canon, he's a canon lawyer. Uh, he was in the workshop, which we did last week, and he just gave a lot of clarifications, which I have incorporated into my notes, but, I mean, what does the church ask you to do? That's what we're talking about today. So, again, we'll go through uh, the document. What I would like to do is just very, very quickly look at the table of contents in, uh, again, your um, Sacramento Archives handbook. It gives you a good sense of how we're going to be unfolding here. So table of contents says there is a preface. We'll look at that in just a second. There's a lengthy section on general norms. So what kinds of things do we need to consider when we're dealing with all of our registers? That's a lengthy section. So you'll see there issues of confidentiality. How do you make entries? How do you issue certificates? How do you make changes? And again, we'll do that section. I'll pause and ask questions and answers. And then we'll go into the individual sacraments. So as we're going through the general norms, if you ask questions about individual sacraments, I may ask you to delay those until we deal with the individual sacraments. So the next page is the, the, the preface, so why don't we look at that. Let's just look uh, just quickly at the first paragraph and then the final paragraph. The first paragraph uh, is from a document from Rome. If you notice, it's from the Pontifical Commission for the Cultural Patrimony of the Church. And they issued a document called the Pastoral Function of Church Archives. What is the pastoral function of church archives? That's actually the content of the second talk. So we're going to circle back to that. But there is a pastoral function of record keeping. And it says, among other things, the archives bears witness to the succession of generations, contributing to a sense of continuity between past and present, becoming useful instruments for future pastoral action precisely because the memory of the facts through tradition becomes more concrete. It's a beautiful uh, understanding of how we should look at our archives. What I want to do now is look at the, the very final paragraph on that page. Um, there's other quotes there that you can look at, but the, the, the final paragraph tells you the scope of this, this work that you have in front of you. This handbook is intended to help parish personnel satisfy the serious obligation of creating and maintaining sacramental records. That's what the previous paragraph said. It is also designed to assure consistent record keeping throughout the diocese. While this is not being promulgated as particular law, these provisions are of value to be observed. Of course, the dictates of universal law always apply, and we're going to be unpacking those as the day goes on. So this book is, is a book of best practices, okay? and we understand that. What you're going to find, especially as you go through older records, perhaps they did things differently back then. But what we're going to walk through is what the church asks you to do. Uh, and then, it, and then it's, it continues, this handbook does not cover every instance of the sacramental records. It's, it's, no book really can do that. At times, the answer to a question will require looking in more than one place of this work. Sometimes doubtful situations will even require consultation with the, die, with the chancellor, me, the diocese, call us, okay? Sometimes you'll encounter a situation which you haven't seen before. Perhaps we've had five or 10 questions on that already, so we probably thought about an answer. And you're going to see in one situation, there's a question that's proposed that we haven't thought about yet because we haven't encountered it yet. It's in the handbook. It was really, really, really interesting. 
It's like, how do you deal with that? We don't know. We haven't dealt with it. We don't ever want to deal with it, but we may have to. But you'll see that when we come down the pike. So. Thank you.